Welcome back, everyone. Going into the second hour here of Roleplay Swan Song. Adam, introduce Howard to Piani. Roleplay weird intelligences. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you see this goat, right? And the goat's playing checkers. Um, yeah, okay. So what do you, when, when the ship, are you guys taking the truck, basically, is the question? I guess so. Okay, cool. So put someone right down somewhere that the Swan Song now has a TL3 delivery truck. <laughs> Great. What? Ship inventory. Um, is anyone actually doing it, or because you know, I will? I yeah, no. Whoever, whoever, whoever has the thing. It's all you, man. All right. Somewhere fitting truck. What is it called? TL three truck. TL three delivery truck. Oh, just a TL three. I got you. Yeah. It's got wheels and runs on batteries. Sure. Batteries. We did yeah, it, so boys. Yeah, it's green science, man. They got fancy. It's basically the grab tank we were supposed to get, but it's like you know, it's truck. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it's, it's the, the, the license plate. The license plate weirdly reads GRVTNK. I don't know, weird. Yeah. There's a My bumper other sticker. Car is a grab yeah. Tank. Yep. Yeah. Oh, when you take that one off, it actually says "fuck you." <laughs> <laughs> a picture of this pink-haired, bearded asshole with the bird. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, so you have the truck now. The truck has the aquarium in the back of it. The aquarium has an octopus in it. The octopus has intelligence in it. Um, Piani, what do you what do you do? Are you there to, like, meet everybody when they show up? Um, or suppose maybe, like, stroll in. Okay, yeah, so you, you can see, you get you catch the end of Prosper and Mr. Sakarian having a, a heated conversation about something. So what the fuck did I make those papers for? An abomination. And I just like turn around and walk away. I go, Piani, um, proud to introduce you to Howard, the octopus. So you're gonna what? you're gonna take her into the into the truck and show her the octopus? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you see like a big like grayish octopus, there's a bunch of rocks. The octopus is just like chilling out in the tank. The tank is connected to a bunch of like strange looking T L three computer equipment. Um Piani yeah. like Slowly looks back, Mr. Sakarian. I'm looking at it. I'm not looking at her. <laughs> okay. What are we gonna My eat own. it? For God's sakes, Piani, we're not barbarians. What? It's a talking octopus. You wouldn't eat that, would you? Then so, what the like, fuck are we doing with it? That'd be like getting a certificate for a cow and knowing its name and its lifestyle, <laughs> and then just consuming it. That'd be weird. <laughs> So and yeah, the machine. What are we doing with it? The machine speaker, uh, like, clicks on, and and there's a voice in the back of the truck suddenly. It says, "Hello, I'm Howard. I'm an octopus. I'm on a spaceship." And Howard, where is the spaceship going? The spaceship's going into space, Mister Sakarian. That is correct, Howard. Piani, as you can see, it possesses the intelligence of a incredible being. This is the mission we're to bring this back, um, so that a flotilla of pirates don't kill us. What are we getting paid? Well, we already got paid for this. We got paid in the price of that man. What's his name again? We're to retrieve him and then we'll achieve two yeah, payments McCrary. for that. McCrary. McCrary. Mr. McCrary, yes. Can I touch it? Kind of frowns, looks at the terrarium and says, How nice. can I touch you? Yeah, I assume so. If you want to, I'm very rubbery. I have tentacles. Look, and the tentacles go wave at you. <laughs> well, you hurt me. No, I won't hurt you. You have a funny voice, but it's a different funny voice than the other one. Everyone's voice is different. My voice sounds like a computer. Beep boop. <laughs> <laughs> I, Piani, like just sort of pokes in at. I, I mean, never seen anything like this. So yeah, yeah. It's All right, so you, you, you like reach your hand in the tank and like, yeah. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, Howard reaches out and like wraps the end of a tentacle around your finger, and you get a sudden like flash in your head of like uh like a blurry like vision of like a lab and there's a bunch of like blue people in the lab and they're like hunched over equipment and it's like looking through like kind of a like a blurry surface, and then that like stops, um, and then Howard is like, hey, you can do the thing. <laughs> what do you mean I can do the thing? The thing. They taught me to do a thing. My brain is special. I'm Howard. This is a spaceship. We're going into space. Isn't that right, Mr. Oh, Sakarian? That is what correct, Howard. I'm excited about space. 
Prosper is literally do? doing this over in the corner. Howard. <laughs> I'm Howard, yes. Can you show me more, Howard? Maybe. What do you want to see? I don't know, just do it again. Okay, so he's like re like reaching for your hand with his little tentacle. <laughs> I, I like grab it. <laughs> okay, cool. All right, so yeah, again, you get like a sudden flash. Um, and you're in like a bigger space now. Um, and there's these three like pillars in front of you. And they're color coded. There's a red one, a blue one, and a yellow one. And you have in front of you all of these plastic rings. And you know that it's dramatically important that you put the rings on the right pillar. And then that like stops. And he's like, see, it's the thing. I can show you stuff. Can I show you anything? Maybe. Oh. You're, from, you're from Majid. Where's Majid? Is that in space, Mr. Sicarian? Are we going to Majid? Where's that? How'd you know I was from Majid? Because you told me. With your brain. I have a big brain. Well, big for an octopus. <laughs> How big is your brain? What else did I tell you? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. There wasn't any water. Your skin's a funny color. Mr. Sicarian's made out of robot parts. <laughs> <laughs> That's not true, Howard. I'm You're actually... right. You're right. Yes, okay, fine. It's true. I want to introduce you to someone. Ooh, I like meeting new people. Who is it? Well, I don't want to do it unless Mr. Scarian's okay. Um, I think it's inevitable that Pi will learn of our guest. I think it would just be important that you perhaps monitor the conversation, Pi has become rather... Uh, you don't have to say it. Terrifying, yes. <laughs> I told you you didn't have to say it. You... All right. He just takes another drink from his... Howard! Standing stand in the back of the U-Haul. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I promised you you'd meet someone new. And um, I wasn't, I wasn't I, lying. I, are we wearing, like, in-ear comms? Um, Woo! Yeah, I mean, sure. Woo! Yeah, I just like. So you, you say on. that, you're like, woo! Woo! And then Howard is like, woo! <laughs> what are we excited about? I, I calms on to Piani and I say, Miss Peek, I don't think this is a good idea. I know what you are trying to do. I'm going to introduce him to woo. So, yeah, so Connor Connor comes out. He's like, near okay, that's fine. Something. And he, he walks up to the back of the truck and he like, peeks his head in and he's like, why are you yelling? What do you want? <clears throat> um, well, woo! I just try to get Howard to say woo again. <laughs> so, yeah, so Howard is like, I am also excited. Woo! I am Howard. And Woo's like, looks around, he's like, I'm very confused. Isn't it about the most crazy thing? The fucking talking octopus. He looks at you, Mr. Scarian, to see, like, if you're, like, giggling or, like, you know, like, he's like, all right, you're going to try and, like, maybe look like a jackass talking about octopus. Uh, fuck you guys. Oh, Wu? Yeah, Wu looks at you like, <clears throat> what, what's going on here? This is confusing to me. I just have my plain Sicarian face on him, and I'm just kind of sipping for my flask. Like, so silver visor? <laughs> no, it's, 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 down, it's up. I mean, or it's down, excuse me. I'm looking at him. All right, Say so hello to Wu Howard. Hello, Woo Howard. Hey, your name is like my name. I'm Howard. And Connor gets in to the truck and walks over and like looks at you and looks at the octopus and he's like, Piani, why, 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 why is the squid talking to me? What are you saying? You haven't seen crazy or shit before. He just shakes his head. He's like, you know what? I, never, I'm. Never mind. He just like walks away. It's the fucking swan song. He's like, I don't, I don't, do need, I don't need this shit. I don't, I have had more than enough. I'm, I'm kind of holding, room. I'm holding a flask like kind of up to my mouth and I just go, you know, Higgins had about the same reaction. Wu and Higgins are pretty similar, actually, if you think about it, yeah. in a lot of different ways. You're right. So yeah, we, we right. was just like, nope, 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 I'm out. And he just like walks away. So you keep your talking fucking octopus yourself. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, um, are you gonna leave the the aquarium in the truck, or are you gonna take it out and put it in the cargo hold? He says he's fine. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah, how like what kind of tools do we have on hand to move? Could we move an aquarium like that down into the cargo hold? The cargo hold has like. Um, 
like a little grav sled and stuff. Because and, you guys, yeah. yeah. Okay. I assume we do that because it just makes more sense than leaving it on the truck. I thought you were going to put Howard guess. in your room. <laughs> no, he said it's like the size of a coat rack, so I'm not. It's pretty. Yeah, it's like a, it's a gigantic aquarium, so I just imagine I I don't think I would go. That'd look just weird. I'm like going through the hallway, like, bush, bush, like. Yeah. I just want to watch you while I sleep. He just probably leaves it in there. <laughs> Okay. All right. So uh, you, you in, reinstall the aquarium nearby, um, and Howard is very excited to be out of the truck and in this other bigger inside of a truck. Um, and uh, Higgs, are you going to call uh, Fleet Captain Saito and let him know you have his octopus? Uh, I. No, I just go to the room and immediately I've been a. I haven't drank in six months, and the first thing I do when I get back to the ship after dealing with this is drink. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just take that, take that six-week ship and just throw it into space. Yeah. I think it naturally happens, like, once we kind of get settled in, and we're like, okay, where to? And we're like, where's Higgins? And maybe we, we, like, just see, we know the music that's playing through his door that means he's in his underwear drunk or something like that. And I'm like, well, we should yeah. call Captain Saito and set coordinates, because we do have to make our way back. That's what we're going to do. You've got, you hear it's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> that's the song that's playing. <laughs> and I'm just like singing every other line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah half heartedly. <laughs> um, Adam, I'd like to actually be doing a little research on, on my own in my in my uh bunk. Okay. And uh like, you know, uh uplifted creatures are Maltech. So it's something that I have studied. So I guess I'm like going back and like maybe I'm focusing on the bad stuff, but like I'd like to sort of reasonably determine what the threat level is. Look, something like this. Like what are the yeah, risks from like mouth tech about, uplifting? Like it's not about harassing octopi, it's about ethics and science. Absolutely. <laughs> right, make, it, your, yeah. make your make your make your mouth roll. Hmm, I got an eight. All right. Um, so uplifting was a thing that was like sort of researched pre pre scream, and it was never really like fully like once AI research kind of like became uh, possible, uh, uplifting mm -hmm. kind of fell by the wayside. Yeah. Um, but you do find a particularly interesting article by a, a Hovaden scientist um, about the psychic potential of various uh, subhuman. Um, brains, like MES, uh, like MES effects on like dolphins, and they're they're at one point in the paper, the doctor is like, if only we had a blue whale, we could test this on. But like cetaceans and octopi and gorillas and stuff, um, all the tests are inconclusive. But they very specifically say like, um, you know, there there is potential for MES to affect non-human brains. Hmm. Uh, yeah. And like, I mean, do I? What do I know about MES? Like, they go unstable and then they freak out and die and explode everything near them. Is that sort of the way that it progresses? It it varies um, because everybody uh, like you don't necessarily choose as a person. Like, obviously, like we chose for Peony what the powers were, but you yeah. express you express talents. Like, some people are just tele like have telepathy. Some people can blow stuff up with their brain. The people mm -hmm. with telepathy tend to go insane, but mm -hmm. so heroes. Basically. <laughs> but the people that have like telekinesis can like yeah blow up spaceships and stuff by accident if they're not treated. Um, right. So like, I as Prosper have no idea if this thing is a ticking time bomb or it's going to teleport us into a star or it'll just go insane or whatever. Yeah, yeah that would be that would be sci tech to like do. That would be that the kind extreme. You're also not sure if it can send images of bunny rabbits into people's head. Yeah. This is very serious. <laughs> yeah, okay, so like, um, I like, I like loop all of that into a file, zip it over onto my monitor, press a couple buttons, and then like send it to, um, I send it to Mr. Higgins. And then I, I also like, I thumb on the comms and I say, not fun, there's something that we have to talk about. I really like the idea of a drunk Higgins in his room in his underwear getting this gigantic wall of text email. Just like a zip yeah. file of all no, the no, terrible this, things this that is can literally, happen. Hell no! <laughs> yeah, no, that's literally what happens. I see a big, like, I see a message from Prosper. I click it. 
I see a wall of text, and then I just zoom it away and <laughs> right into the <laughs> fucking recycling bin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what yeah. I'm, you know, I, I said, Lanfan, we need to talk. As always, uh, uh, Pi is, is present uh, and says, um, is this about our new passenger? Oui, Lanfan. There is uh, some conflicting uh, studies regarding the process of creating creatures like this passenger that we have acquired. I don't want to misrepresent it to you, but all the information is available. I've uh, downloaded some information that is commonly available through Maltech studies and universities, and um, you can peruse it at your leisure. I've read it all already. Thank you, though. Excellent. I am happy to hear that. That <laughs> <laughs> <Sad> is all. <laughs> okay. All right. So, uh, where to you, Salon Song? What's happening? Is it time for a meeting? Do you need to meet uh -oh. to discuss this? Well, no, I, I, know that, I know where we're going. We're going to 404, then we're going to 304, then we're going back over to 103. Okay. Yeah. Well, you don't have to go back, you don't have to, go back to 103. You can, um, you can meet with... Um, you, can, you can just call Saito and they'll... Like, they've got ships everywhere. Oh, okay. Well, then I guess we start planning to go to 404, then I'll call Saito eventually. Yeah, we just head towards. Okay. Is four or four where the guy is being held or whatever, so we can complete that mission? Is that what we're doing? Uh, there was a reason that we were going to four or four. Three or four is where I'm having a meet with an agent. What are we going to four or four for? Because we're supposed to recover either the body or him. Was that at four or four? No, I think that's that's in three or four. But like, because they're taking him back to Majid. Um, four or four, I think, was the closest like system where you could get. Like oh, we needed shit. we needed uh, life support. That's what it was. Yeah, right? aren't we like super yeah. low on life support? I think that's. Uh, what I think you're. I think you're still doing okay. I think we were supposed to go to four hundred four. Well, you can you can stuff. refuel you can refuel and get life support in any system that has planets. Like there's an exchange gas station in every one, so you guys can fill up on fuel and life support here. You just can't do like ship repairs or like anything okay. like that. I know we had up, what upgrades did we complete? We have a better power supply. So the ship, now. yeah, the ship has five points worth of extra power. Yes. Um, and power is required for basically everything on the ship. Everything else, okay. Yeah. So just I kind mean, of in our meetings, I'm like, just as a general reminder, I think we should still consider better transportation abilities, maybe better weapons. We're still quite low on the tier there. Yeah. Yeah, upgrading the spike drive would be really smart. You can upgrade. Yeah, you can up upgrade the spike drive to a level three for. 20k. It'll take up level a one right now, right? Yeah, you're level one now. I'll chip in 5k for that. Yeah, I easily do. But you gotta you gotta get to a system and buy it, and it takes time to install. But yeah. let's I'll plan chip. on doing these adjustments for when we exchange the the gentleman. Uh, the, I believe that. No, the cost. Sorry, the cost. The cost is multiplied because you guys aren't a fighter. It's um, 100k for drive two. It's 200k for drive three, and it would eat up two or four of your um, five. Power. To be honest, Adam, like your first price was twenty k, and I think we should. I mean, otherwise it's false advertising. So I think we're just going to keep it stick at that. Cool, yeah. yeah. No, yeah so yeah. you you buy that drive, and it comes. It's a cardboard box that says <laughs> space drive on it, and it's full of bricks. No, <laughs> we fucking got ripped off. Yeah, Adam got us again. <laughs> okay. Um. Uh. If I may make a suggestion, um, there is a planet where we would be welcomed and where we would be able to find a, 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 a convenient spike drive upgrade. It's a close stop to um, the locations we will be visiting. It's over yeah. in it's over in six zero two. It's Cabral. Yeah, it's. We'll do that. I mean, I'm okay with this. You guys, obviously, it's Captain Higgins' decision, but it's going to be after we drop off Howard. Oh, yes. No, I agree. We must get rid of that. I mean, deliver the cargo as quickly as possible. <laughs> so, Captain, set the course. You hear our recommendations, I think. Yeah. Let's, I think just, let's get those paydays, too, and surely the experience that comes with it. Well, then I think we're going to Majid <laughs> 304. Okay, so you want to make the the two jumps that'll take you to. Uh, Is the map up anymore, or do I just? Yeah. No, it should be. It's on the it's on the first page. Weird. Why am I not? I'll um I'll move you back. I'll move you away from the page and then back. My reload. 
Yeah, I, I'm seeing it. I've seen it this oh. entire time. Oh. Okay. Um. All right, Higgs, make a make a jump check, please. Uh, so this uh, is uh 403 to 404. Okay. Nailed it. Eight. All right. No problem. And then there was no reason to like I'm meeting with the agent in 304, and we're also getting the money or getting the body or proof of life or whatever, right? Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. The 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 death certificate. Okay. Uh, so this is 404 to 304. Well, that's a well, that's a success right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you did it. Good job. All right. So. Twelve days pass um, between between jumps, um, and uh, I think when you jump from Protagoras to um, Aniansi, you you get a message when you arrive, Higgs. That's from uh, the Ratterman group. It's the same people who've been mailing you, um, and the notice says um, that like. It's like kind of a canned, like you you can see it was sent to a bunch of people, and it's like attention uh, clients of. Whatever that asshole's name was. Um, let me find him here. Anyway, he's fired. He got fired. Uh, basically, it's like he's moving on to another career somewhere else. Uh, Winston Chow. Yeah, Mr. Chow uh, is taking a permanent leave from the Ratterman group. His clients will now be handled by uh, Mr. Vincent Pollard. Uh, you can expect a phone call or a comm from uh, Mr. Pollard uh, at your earliest convenience. Um, and so... While you're all in drive space, what's everybody doing? What's everybody doing with their two weeks of time? Brooding. I mean, we don't yeah. need to role play it unless you want yeah. to, but I've spent literally 20 hours describing the Thunder Gun to Howard. Like nice. he's one of the only ones that still wants to hear about it, and I've been telling him about all yeah, the Howard steps. Asks you, uh, uh, yeah, Howard And now, and now, everyone that Howard talks to gets to hear about the gun too. Mr. Sakarian has a big gun. Let me tell you about it. I've learned many things from Mr. Sakarian. <laughs> If I'm ever there when he's talking about it, I'm smiling and I'm looking around like <laughs> someone else appreciates what this is. Um, yeah. At some point over the two weeks, um, Prosper goes, when it's like dead quiet, everybody's asleep, it's like the middle of everybody's sleep cycle or something like that, he yeah. goes to Howard. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, you're in the, the cargo hold and... Howard is sitting there putting colored rings on pegs and then taking them off and putting them on again. They're just scowling. Frenchily. Does that get boring to you? Frenchily. Oh, hello, Prosper. I am organizing the rings on the pegs. <laughs> How did you know my name? Mr. Sakarian told me. Mr. Sakarian has told you a lot. <laughs> Mr. Sakarian has a very large gun. Would you like to tell like me to tell you about it? No, thank you. I have he heard about it from Mr. Sakarian. I wish I had a gun. I wish I had eight guns. Look how many arms I have. <laughs> you would really only be able to use four guns like that because you need two arms to manage each gun effectively. <laughs> I, could just, I could design a special octopus gun that I would only need one tentacle to fire. Then I could shoot eight guns at once. Wouldn't that be interesting? Yes, if you could design a special octopus gun that only required one gun to fire, one arm to fire... Never mind, if I could design a special human gun that only required one finger to fire, then I could fire ten of them. That sounds amazing. <laughs> Prosper I have to tell Mr. Sakarian about this. Very sort of grumpily. So sometime no, in the next couple of days, Mr. Sakarian, you hear, Mr. Sakarian, I have a great idea. You could have ten guns if you designed a gun that only took one finger to fire. I tell no, him no, about no, a guy no, I encountered no, that no. actually had a gun like that. They were ring guns. Uh, no, Howard, that is not... no. It, what is your special trick? My special trick? I have many yes. special tricks. What's the best one? I can change color. Look. And he like turns from like gray to red. Now I am red. Would you like to see me turn blue? Look, yes. now I am blue. That now is I am yellow. very impressive. This is yeah. purple. I like purple. That is not purple. That is more like a deep <laughs> blue. Uh, wait, <laughs> it's the color of the water is affecting your... No, never mind. I really mind. like I, this I scene, like... The outline of Prosper talking to the aquarium, and he's just like up against it, like <laughs> now I'm now I'm pink, yeah. now I'm blue. I have eight tentacles. <laughs> Prosper's like, no, Howard, please, please, no, stop. Listen, um, is there like, have I learned anything about how to interact with these creatures better? Like, is there some sort of commonality to uplifted creatures that I would know about, or 
is this one entirely unique? Yeah, he seems to be, in, in your research, entirely unique. Le crap. Uh, listen, what it was, what's MES stand for again? Metadimensional extraversion syndrome or something. How have you heard of metadimensional extraversion syndrome? No. It sounds very interesting. Tell me it is, everything it is. about it. <laughs> Yeah, okay, like, I sit down and I, I just give him, like, a general overview from, like, the, the lay person's understanding. Um, right. and, and also from, you know, like, my perspective of knowing Maltech and what, what happens with uplifted right. creatures. So, like, you know, I'm, I'm just like, you know, at, sometimes the human brain functions in very u unique ways. It has uh, special genetic modifications that allows it to access the warp, which is a realm of demons and then when you draw power through the warp demons can manifest into your body um scratch that <laughs> i give an in-universe explanation for mes and uh like sure. I'm, I'm i'm seeing if there's any um so at some point when you're describing it like twinging. maybe maybe when you get to the part where you're like if it's kept under control people can like manifest special powers uh, Howard is like, oh, the thing. I can do that. I have that thing you said. Metadimensional whatever it is. Extraversion syndrome. Yeah, the thing. <laughs> Piani has the thing, too. Yes. Ms. Peak does have the thing. What thing do you have? I can show people stuff. Prosper says to the octopus, show me your thing. <laughs> That's exactly what he says. I, I, I say... <laughs> I say, show me your thing, right. and I so put he, my hand on the glass. Yeah, so you like, blah, 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 like the suckers. To, and yeah, you get like a quick like flash of, of like shared memory of like being in a tank somewhere with scientists around. I see. It's is the that, lab. Is that is your memory? Yes. Are you able to read my memory? I am. You like computers. Ye that is not accurate. You must have misread. <laughs> <laughs> Are you able to show people other things? Or is it only your memories? Sometimes I see things. Things that are far away. Things that haven't happened. Things that happened a long time ago. Things from people's heads. I don't speak French. You speak French. French is weird. French is a, the most pure language in the universe. The French would say that. <laughs> uh, the things that you have, that, that have not happened, but you have seen, is there any commonality among them? No, I don't think so. I just see stuff, stuff around me. Around you? What do you mean? I can see the future. I can see your future. I can see the future of the ship. Mr. Higgins is drunk. That is not the future. It will be. It is also the past. Yes. You it's probably heard lot. that from Mr. Sakarian. <laughs> that is not a good trick. I like Mr. Sakarian. He has a big gun. Would you like <laughs> me to tell you about it? Uh, I, I sort of like uh, just like put my head in my hands. Um, I'm trying to see like, no, I don't have anything. Yeah, uh, I, I kind of say, Howard, it was nice to meet you. And then I just walk away. Okay. So as you're walking away, um, I think Pi comes on the, the speaker uh, and says... Um, Do I hear you, this? I, yeah. Aren't you going to introduce us? You haven't been speaking to him yet? No. I thought it would be polite to allow someone to introduce me first. Things got messy the last time I talked to a passenger. Yes, they did. Um... You're not going to brain interface with this one, are you? I suppose that depends. I suppose it does. Uh, Howard, there is someone here who would very much like to hear about you. Can you hear the voice coming from the speakers? So there's like, there's a pause, and then, yeah, Howard says, Who's there? I'm Howard. I'm an octopus. Howard, We're on a Howard. spaceship. Howard. Howard, this is Pi. Pi, this is Howard. And Octopi. <laughs> so Pi, Pi uh, says, um, thank you, Prosper. You're not as funny as you think you are. 
I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, uh, you know, yeah, so I, I, I wave something about, uh, you know, uh, the Pantheon's uh, sense of humor is a bit beyond me. <laughs> so are you are you staying for the conversation or are you just going to be like, OK, I would ask. I, I would ask. I would say, Pi, do you mind if I stay for your conversation? If you like. Thank you. And um, Pi, Pi says, um, hello, Howard. Would you like to learn how to play a game? <laughs> 